Morning guys, so I'm still struggling with this starboard sail drive, not going into gear. It's kind of a big problem because only with the port engine, I don't really have the ability to maneuver to port. So it's not ideal in these windy conditions and coming into these tight anchorages with coral reef all around us. It's a bit of a bit of a worry because we upgraded these in Guatemala and they were working fine before we did the upgrade. And um, now it's just completely slipping. So, Worst case scenario, I'll have to buy a new drive cone um, setup, which is about a thousand bucks, including the uh, the new top nut and everything that we need. So this is far from ideal. Let's get into it. You can see the top nut is still pinned over in the right place. It's not like that's come undone. This top end of it looks fine. But what we're doing is just uh, checking the adjustment of this to see when this actually engages. So that's moving freely. So I've checked the setting on the set screw, it's fine. Right now we're in forward, but I can still really rotate the sail drive. If it's in gear, it should be trying to turn the whole engine over. So we definitely got something wrong here guys. That cone clutch is just totally slipping. Reverse is acting a bit better. And I put it in reverse. There. So now I can't turn that. It's trying to turn the whole engine. So I gotta check the tolerance in there. And if that's out, then I've got to uh, look at the next step, which is maybe buying a new drive cone, which is unfortunate. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a Hurricane Damage Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? So after doing some major bulkhead repairs and some big upgrades to get ready to head into the Pacific Ocean, we were sailing around the San Blas Islands in Panama, testing out the boat before we transited the Panama Canal. Fish, baby. Uh, oh my god, that's our fish. So, see this? He hooked his own. He hooked his own skin. I don't even know what the odds would be for that. Treats for the dogs. Have you been good, boy? Linda! Oh, you like that. She's coming, mate. She's coming along. Scale of one to ten. Eight and a half. No, if it was a mahi, I'd be ten. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to these numbers. We have 9.5 knots of true wind. 
Our apparent wind speed is 14 and we are doing six knots average right now. The wind is at a 45 degrees. There's a little bit of chop around still because there's an opening between two of the keys out to the ocean. So it's not exactly calm and flat right now. And we're still just cruising through it. The shrouds on the uh, leeward side are not getting slack at all. Um, which means the tension so far that we put on the rig looks to be perfect. We'll see what happens when we're up in the 18 to 20 knot apparent wind speed range. But right now those things are just solid. Just the shape of the, the sugar scoop extensions that we did, the, how the water's just rushing off them and I almost guarantee that we've picked up a bit of speed because of those. That's what it feels like anyway. It's really hard to to tell because you'd have to have identical conditions and blah blah blah. We also have a perfectly clean um, hull right now because of the fresh anti foul so everything's in our favour to be going as fast as we possibly can but the boat just feels so solid. Before if we were in these conditions we'd hear all of this creaking, all of this stuff would just be moaning and groaning, groaning at us so in terms of like the rigidity of the boat there is a massive, massive difference. Couldn't really be happier right now with the sailing performance of this boat. Oh! <laughs> We were lucky enough to arrive just as a local panga was there with some provisions. So we stocked up in the essentials. What is it, 20 to 24? 20 it's not bad. Have they got more? And got ready to cook some of the fish we caught with our new corner friend Enrique in the West Hollandaise. Now it's in the best place. Minutes? The going rate for a beach fire on their land is $5. This is the back of the fridge, no? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But we usually give ten dollars and they end up helping us out with the setup. After they collect dead palm leaves from around their islands to clean up, they usually save them to burn on occasions like this. Nice going. <laughs> There's something so rewarding about catching then cooking your meal over a hot fire. A real sense of living off the land. We caught most of these this morning. Three and then two this afternoon. And now they're on fire in front of us. Feeding the family. We often talk about how grateful we are to live this life. Does it get any bit of work? Oh gone. I'll just throw that. Oh yeah, thank you fish. And it's something I wish everyone could experience at least once in their lives because it can be seriously life changing. Morning, everybody. So, we've been challenged to a race today, and there's going to be four boats in it. And two of the boats one is Freddy, 
which is behind us there, he's got a Nordatec 46. And the other one is Lidan, he's got a um, Halberg Rassi. And the other is our friend Steve, who's down in Banedup, and we're gonna meet up with him around the first corner. But Lidan and Freddie both need crew. Let's go, Fuck, I'm tending to stay on this one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, 15, 16 knots of uh, true wind, so we're sailing into the wind to go to Hollandaise. So we'll be having over 20 knots apparent, so should be pretty exciting conditions. Also, we have Dalos. I'm sure most of you have heard of them before, but um, Brian messaged me, he's on his way here to Sandblast, and he also wants to have a little race with us. So this is a good little practice for the real event, which will be the race against Dalos. Your crew member. Okay, so we'll meet you down there and we'll start there. We're gonna go down to Panadoop and meet Steve there. Word got out about the race, so our good friend Ilya decided to join us on his Utrimer 51. You just go before me, I'm gonna catch up, okay? And our friend Shaggy on his Lagoon 380, who we had already raced against in the Bacchus Regatta. I know! <laughs> Engines are wrong. Heading out over to the start line. We've got the Utrima and the uh, Nordatec there, the other Lagoon, Halberg Rassi, and Leopard coming out now. So we're just going to meet south of Panedup and just get in the line and then we'll start racing. But I get so. I get so. Oh! Oh shit! <laughs> so, yeah, turn up if you can, if you've got the space, but there's reefs everywhere. He got off my arms. I don't know why Tom wants to use his <laughs> casting rod. I was just saying that I get so competitive um, when this kind of stuff happens. And I think that's, I've got a very competitive nature and I think that's actually why I was able to like rebuild this boat and go through all this bulkhead stuff is because I'm competitive. I don't want to give up. Very good. But, uh, here we have an example of that competitive nature kicking in again. So it's going to be really interesting because where we want to go is directly upwind, like on the nose. So it's going to be a lot of tacking involved. We'll be able to see which boat points better into the wind, which boat uh, just sails better in general. It's a really good test. So I'm quite curious. I think the Nordatec 46, us and them should be fairly, fairly even. They've got a big flybridge as well. The u 51 is obviously just going to smoke us. And then the Leopard, I think it's a Leopard 44. Um, that's, that should be sort of similar as well. I'm super curious to see what's going to happen. Where's Lidan? Lidan's just taken off. Yeah, didn't you hear him on the radio? What did he say? Oh, fucking, he's out of here. He's got a head start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lynn, do the horn. <laughs> Parley was absolutely flying and we immediately noticed how much higher we could point into the wind than most of the other cats. In just over 20 knots of wind, we were doing around 8 knots close hauled, but that wasn't enough to keep the Utrimer at bay. Mishap catching the drone, but man, we're doing so well. We're absolutely smoking everyone else, 
and this is the Uchuma. He's only going a little bit faster than us, but he's bared away because he's going to a different place called Combombia. So, honestly, Pale is sailing so fucking well right now. Woo! So, Adam on the Nordatec 46, he just announced on the radio that he's lost all steering. So it's all of his uh, hydraulic fluid on the steering system just dumped out of the out of the rams and everything. We asked if they need help, but uh, Ben and um, Milana are right there, so worst case they can tow him. But every boat should have an emergency steering system, so hopefully he's got something like that on his boat. So it's nice, it's nice to win the race and everything, but it's also kind of. Um, Word. That puts it all <laughs> puts it all into perspective. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it, yeah. it made it all worthwhile to actually see the results now. Let's go with gratifying. It's so gratifying <laughs> to have done all that work, but to have the boat actually sailing so much better is gratifying. Very gratifying. Did it? First place. So how'd she go? She flew, mate. It's hard to say. Like it feels there's new bottom paint. What do we think of the anti foul? I don't even know what anti foul it is. <laughs> you couldn't review it. We put anti foul on in Guatemala, and then when we crossed the Pacific, it just started growing on it. Like it was like a jungle down there, like within a week. <laughs> We're able to sail closer to the wind now. It, I don't understand it. We've made the boat a foot and a half longer. Bulkheads are strong. Both not flexing, but I don't know how all of this makes us point better. We're like 38 degrees apparent into the wind. Like between 30 and 40 degrees. Before we'd be like between 40 and 45 degrees and then everything would start laughing and stuff. So it's we'd... definitely sailing better. I saw, saw 22 knots here and there apparent. I would have put at least one reef in normally, but because we're racing, of course we're not gonna reef. And here they come now. Here's Shaggy. Yeah. 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 Nice one, brother! Yeah. Shaggy's a good bloke, he's always happy, always excited, he loves life. So here comes Adam with his busted steering hose. So I'm not sure how he's controlling the boat right now, but he'll be on standby in case he wants to play bumper boats. I think Tom is down the back and he's locked the rudders uh, midships, like sink, so that Fred can just uh, maneuver the boat with his engines. Found some of this, it might come in handy. He's lost all his fluid. Let's see what Steve has to say about it. Congratulations. Ah! <laughs> Is that that's a leopard 44 or 43? 44. Barbecue on the beach! What happened, Freddy? I put some duct tape around it, it didn't seem to work. Um, good old duct tape. <laughs> and, uh... Oh no. Right there. Yeah. So we could steal the hose from the other side, isolate that, and just have one working rudder. So he's got hydraulic steering, and luckily there's a bypass valve, and we can isolate this ram. We just do have to bung this hose here so that uh, he doesn't lose all his fluid again but um, basically he'll have one rudder stuck in midships and the other one with hopefully full control so I don't know how the boat will handle like that but better than it does at the moment <laughs> it was such a fun race and as you can probably tell I was over the moon with how well Parlay performed we had all literally put our blood sweat and tears into rebuilding this boat and to have it not only sailing again but sailing better than she ever has had me smiling from ear to ear.